Hey, everybody. Hey, Jerry. How's it going? Hi, Michael. Um, let's see. We've got Yawk. We've got Karen. We've got Steph. We've got Ben. Waiting for Sonia. We'll see if she comes up. And then we got Josh Classman coming on in a minute. Um, he should be here soon. Um, how's everybody holding up? Good. Okay, there's Liz Goldner. Uh, the writer just came on. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Sonia's calling. She might need the code. Um, let's see what's going on with Sonia. She, I think she'll come on in just a second. And I know Josh is going to come on too. And just a sec just a second. It'll take a couple a, a minute for everybody to come. Let me see this. Let me text them. Oh, Sonia doesn't have the login. Okay, um, let me f text it to her. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Um, How are you doing, Jerry? I'm doing okay. Um, if I can find the login on my phone while I'm looking at you guys, I'll be doing okay. <laughs> um, let me see what comes up. This, this Zoom world has become, you know, a, a new reality. I, I'm teaching two classes uh, still at Cal State LA, my ceramics class. Hey, Sonia, did, did you signed up for the login? Are you looking for the login? Yeah. Okay, let me send it to you. Um, it'll be right there. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Um, let's see, where's my scent? This is what I love about technology. You were saying that you do this a lot. I, I mean, just in the last few weeks, I'd never done video conferencing before, but now I have to teach a couple classes and just talking to a grid full of people on your computer is kind of normal these days, it seems like. Yeah, so I'm sending this to Sonia. Um, there we go. Is anyone hey, else? Hey, Josh. Um, that you don't need a password you just log in oh it's asking you for a password hold on let me find it just a second um let's see password uh i'm gonna have to text it to you josh i'm gonna okay so i'm gonna text him all this cop Come on, I know you can do it. Copy, okay, and then here you go, Josh. Uh, bagel, let's see, his name is, his, his, I've got him under Bagel, not Josh. That used to be his, that used to be his nickname. Okay, hold on, there you go, paste. There it is. Okay, that should get you in, Josh. Um, all right, so there's Sonia. Um, so, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. It looks like Josh is going to pop on in just a second. Um, thanks for everybody's patience. It should be on in just a second. I mean, the reason I'm waiting for Josh, obviously, is because he's a guest, but also because I'm going to start with him. Let's see, is he on yet? No, I don't see him yet. There he is. Okay, hey, Josh, what's up, man? How you doing? So, um, can you hear? Can you hear me? You can turn your mic on. Oh, he needs one second. Okay, so Sonia, you can turn your mic on if you want to, unless you've got extraneous sounds and you want to leave it off until Josh comes back. Okay, Josh, you got your mic on? Hi, Sonia. Oh, hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, Josh, can you, can you say you. something? Oh, he's connecting to audio right now. There he is. It should be. It's using your phone for your audio. Josh. 
Oh, his girlfriend's helping him. There's still mm -hmm. there's still Elizondo from Mexico. She's on our one our one of our panelists. Let's see. Let me unclick Josh. Josh is um. Let's see. Unclick. Uh, I'll un unmute. Unmute. And then where's where's Josh? Is it Josh is Josh is? Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you, Josh. Okay. Okay, it's yeah, pretty low. Yeah. Okay. So on my gonna, end it is. Yeah, we're gonna start with Josh. Josh has um got to go uh, in a little while because he just did a um. So on the panel today we've got Josh, uh, nicknamed Bagel Classman. We've got Suleiman Elizondo from Mexico. We've got Sonia Shank with one of the paintings we showed in one of our shows a couple times to her right. We've got Ben Jackal and we've got Michael Stearns. Um, so awesome. I'm gonna start with Josh. Um, Josh, you just tell us about what's going on. You just republished a zine. Uh, what Josh does is he does photographs of um, the Venice life um, from since the 80s and he also does exceptional writing about it and has had a book published about it We're talking to him about publishing another one and we've shown his work in several shows including a history of Venice and um, Out in the street last year, which is a photography show. So Josh tell us what's going on with the zine Hey, can you hear me right now? Yeah, everybody can hear okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, with the zine so my story is even though this is a horrible time for all of us, this is giving me all the time in the world to work on things that I normally want to because I have a job that isn't really art related. So I, my girlfriend and I republished the second edition of the thing that I made from me on the streets for my friend Rick Clayton's book signing party. And I just sort of went for it and I put it up on social media that they were for sale and they went really quickly. So I got very lucky with that. And that's just sort of how I make an ends meet at the moment. So my, my uh, regular job kicks back in, which probably won't be for about a year. Yeah. Yeah. You work in the entertainment business like I do. Um, yes. Josh is a, <laughs> Josh's other job is as a production manager on big shows like Coachella and stuff. So that is shut down. But the zine got a really good reaction, and I didn't know if it was or wasn't because the last time we gave them out, and of course they went really quick because they were free. And I was like, I'm, I, my confidence is fifty fifty usually, so I'm like, all right, I'll go for it, but I'm not expecting much. And I was pleasantly surprised with the outcome. How can you want to tell us how many of them you? What what what, what were they priced at? Twelve bucks. So they were 12 bucks plus the shipping, which was close to about four to five dollars, except for the ones that went over, so over for a little more. And um, I, I would say about 80 percent of them are getting shipped out, and the rest people are just going to pick up in person. And how many did you sell? I, as of right now, we are at 87. Killer, and that's just in a couple days, right? And that's in 48 hours. Yeah. Tell us what's in the, tell us what's in the book. In the zine, I mean. Um, it's it's just some of my old photography from hanging out back in the day down at the breakwater in the pavilion and the shots that I took back then of friends skating and hanging out. and um, Quick little stories. Not really anything close to being as detailed as like what I'll post. But because, you know, these were like little written down stories in chicken scratch with sketch art. And, you know, it was, it's a zine, so it's supposed to somewhat like look pretty punk rock which is definitely the way it came off and, yeah uh, cool yeah that's it it was cool but i i made it at coachella in between getting bands off and on on stage roger gassman the curator for beyond the streets would send me a photo and he would say like draw something and write something to, about that and i would get the bands on i'd do it really quick i'd take a picture of it send it back to him and between our correspondence he was able to put the zine together that's pretty awesome. Um, it came out really well. Yeah. What's your um, okay? So, um, what what like? How has the um, the COVID thing affected your um, your art? Have you been into, out taking photos? What yeah. Oh yeah. I instantly started taking photos. 
right off the bat. And I got lucky because the camera stores for what I know, most of them are closed like everyone else right now. And I just happened, someone gave me for Christmas eight rolls of Kodak Tri-X 400. So I was able to just start going to town and I just started shooting everything I could about this stuff. You know, just everything. Everything from like the boardwalk being completely shut down but taking pictures in the afternoon so you would know that it's a weird thing for the fact of the way the sunlight is compared to like early in the morning when you could definitely get that same picture but you know it's different when it's two in the afternoon and you see the sun going closer west and people getting kicked out of the skate park and you know just all the signs you know i i know everyone's shooting right now and i'm just trying to keep it as analog as possible and just strictly doing it with the film and so i have to wait on the back end to be able to get it developed but it's all good I, the anticipation sort of fun you know yeah well when i'd like to talk to one of the other guests about what they're doing um let's go to mexico let's go to sila sila med elizondo um who we've shown uh, recently um in our, in our gallery all last year in our gallery in san pedro uh, we had paintings by her up almost for eight months, and we did well with them. And she's got a new series of paintings. She's She lives in near, sort of, you live in Mexico, you'll have to tell us where, but um, your, um, but then we ended up um, sending back some, some of the older work, hopefully getting some new work sent out. And where are those paintings now? Are they still in San Antonio, do you think? Or did you get them? They're still in San Antonio. The the um, the front the lines are blocked, so we can't, you know, go back and forth from Mexico to the U.S. But I mean, it's okay. People are here looking at artwork through, you know, their own screens. So it's not like there's anything I can really do about it. I was also, I had a show booked for next month, which of course got canceled, and so we're doing you know, online um, appreciation of the work. And I'm sorry for, for all this noise. I have two small kids and four dogs who follow me around. <laughs> it's so hard to have a Zoom meeting. No, it's it's fine. It's absolutely fine. In fact, actually, it kind of adds to it. Um, <laughs> so tell us what's going on with your painting. What have you been up to in terms of painting? So I... I, I I was doing this um, this whole series about um, women supporting women and doing all this transformation in the way we cope with each other to generate a community of support and of of admiration because there's usually a lot of competition among us and and I was really excited about it I, actually a month before we were sequestered to our homes no two weeks before we were sequestered to our homes there was this big um there was this big was it called i'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm lost for words but we had a parade in, in the center of our city where women were um, supporting each other and there's a lot of violence right now against women in mexico so we were we were focusing on that and we were bringing attention to that. And I felt so connected with my work and with what was actually happening. And then COVID came and everything changed. Everything is so, you know, loopy feelings all around. And instead of having, you know, some inspiration where I could keep on um, building on or creating, I, we, we just started to, you know, think about our own health and uncertainty and what was going to happen with the world and yeah and so um do you feel like uh, the 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 solitude or well not you have a big family so not necessarily solitude but do you feel like being a little less able to go out has done and changed your work at all has it added to it i don't feel a lot of difference about I mean, in terms of my work, not being to go out or it's just the quality of with which I'm, I'm connecting with it. You know, I'm, I, I, right now I'm painting just to escape, to not be 
you know, present with my thoughts or anxieties. And, and sorry. So, yeah, and, and it's nice to have that whenever I can because I'm being a teacher at my home or, or working with other stuff. It's kind of depressing. The day, you know, seems a lot more depressing. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's, I think we're all battling with that kind of thing. I, you know, the interesting thing, I've been spending so much more time with my paintings um, and, you know, I have my, my draw, my, my big, two big um, doors that are set up on blocks that I, I paint with using, and um, they all have wonderful light coming in and, and I have a lot of more time to spend in front of them. And one of the things that I realized the other day that, that my paintings relate to a ha hobby I had when I was a kid, which was um, I used to collect stamps when I was really young, like eight to 12 or something like that, and or 14 even. And I realized that, the, uh, that there's something about collecting stamps that relates to the kind of work I do which has to do with doing them all together in a grid and then breaking the grid up as if you had a block of stamps and you broke the stamps off and then you sent them to people on a letter and all the stamps go away and then all of a sudden someday, you know, I don't know. It's just really interesting that that, that, that came up. So I felt like, you know, battling my demons while at home has actually helped my work a little bit in terms of understanding what I'm thinking, what my, what my subconscious is doing and my urges are. Um, I wanted to talk to uh, Ben next. Um, oh, by the way, um, we are gonna, um, if, the, if, the, if this times out at 40 minutes, just log back on, okay? Because we're using the free version, okay? Um, let's talk to Ben now. I'm gonna unmute you. Um, I think I just did it. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Ben. So tell us what's going on with you. I know you had a, you have not only your art, but you also have, I mean, this is about our art, but, you know, you're, where are you in, in, in what part of town are you in? I'm in Culver City. Um, I've got a studio here that I share with Dana Weiser. Uh, and she's self-isolated in her own house in Santa Monica because she is, uh, she has a weakened immune system. And we just decided, like, at the beginning of this to just totally separate. So, and then I live about a mile away with my wife, um, kind of in uh, Palms area. So I just drive up to my studio. I've pretty much been here, like honestly, like about seven days a week. I just drive a mile up the road. I spend the day here in my studio. Um, I am still teaching two classes, Cal State LA, um, beginning ceramics and intermediate ceramics. And I kind of adjust everybody to take their tools and everything home. And I, you know, and then I, I made some demo projects, sent pictures out. I have weekly Zoom meetings. It was a class that only met once a week, so we meet on that period and we kind of catch up and it's kind of hung together a little bit. They're turning papers into me this week that I had assigned. So it's really weird being a ceramics teacher, you know, like this, teaching like this, talking to my computer's uh, uh, camera here, right? Um, but you know, it has really like, we, we've kind of kept together. I get this, the whole classes on the screen and they're all isolated and we kind of connect and it, it does feel like there's still something there. I've really tried to keep the camaraderie of the class going and solving problems. I, I actually had to drive across town and deliver a bag of clay and tools to two of my students that couldn't bring anything home. And it was either that or they just didn't do any more work for the semester because uh, there were no stores open they could buy anything from. So um, and that's also given me a purpose, you know, to be leading, you know, this like 40 students like, um, uh, to make work and to keep going and and we talk about the bigger system and like just keeping morale up and using this opportunity as artists to improvise and adapt and overcome. I mean, I think that this is in some ways this is normal for a lot of artists is like the unpredictable things happening that are tough isolation um, lack of support like we're used to this. I think, you know, art, I've seen a lot of artists doing amazing things. Um, and producing and we get along, you know, and we're used to the drought. So we do well during drought conditions. <laughs> uh, so, um, so but then besides that, uh, so I've tried to then, you know, if you know my own art, you know, I kind of channel in some ways, 
contemporary politics and global events and um, disaster uh, through my art for the last uh, decade or so. So like for me, finding like ways to channel this um, event through my own studio, through my sculpture, um, has been interesting and like ideas come. So I, I want to share one thing that I've been doing with you. Maybe some of you have seen this. I've been working on a piece, uh, a group of uh, ceramic uh, porcelain face masks, right? I've got my bandana here. This is how I go out in public, right? Um, kind of fun. But um, I got this idea that, you know, I could roll porcelain super thin, an eighth, an eighth of an inch thick clay, beautiful white clay, and then kind of press it against my face and make a mask. And then it's so delicate that I would add the straps and then kind of just let it set it down on the kiln shelf and I couldn't touch it again because it's so delicate. So I've got a few pictures of these things here, all just on my phone, just kind of. Oh, those are cool. So, <laughs> and those have been fired, those have been fired once. There's a table full of them right there. I had an, an, uh, a live Instagram thing with LA Louver this last week where I made these for people. Uh, I'm, you know, I spent a few minutes making them. Uh, let's see, there's a detail. Yeah, and they're kind of, you know, they're kind of about the casualties. Like these are used up face masks that have been dropped on the ground. So like they're kind of, you know, they're, they're kind of used up. They're kind of gone. I, I spent the last few years working on a series of cannons that are like worn out and used up and are laying there and they kind of feel like, like casualties lined up in a row. So I see these face masks as kind of symbolic of the casualties and and that there'll also be, when all our face masks are gone and we get back to normal life, that these ceramic porcelain face masks will be here as a, um, you know, as a marker, a memory that, you know, that won't go away. These, these porcelain objects will, will hang around and, um, and just be a marker of this time. And doing this while we're all doing it, like just doing it now alone in my studio, making these things now is so important to me. You can't make this art in two months from now. It has to be right now while this is happening. And That's just, cool. That's yeah, cool. So that's, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Uh, other sculptures too. I mean, honestly, I've been more active in my stuff. I, I, I broke my thumb two years ago when I've been kind of just trying to get back to normal, I feel like to some extent for a while. And honestly, this like the ability to just be in my studio seven days a week has been really, I think, helpful for, for my own practice and my own life. Okay, so very there. that's really interesting. Um, I'd, I can't wait to see one of those in person. I've been following that work. Um, I wanted to talk to Michael Stearns next. Michael Stearns is um, going to unclick you. Where's you? Where are you? Is it Michael's iPad? Is that what that is? Okay, great. Unmute. Okay, so you should be unmuted now, I guess. Or unmute audio. That should have worked. There you go. I can hear you. You're good okay, there. That helps. So uh, Michael uh, has a studio at the loft where we used to have our gallery in San Pedro. Um, he, um, but he recently cl re recently closed it. Hi Jody. He recently recently closed it in order to um, focus on his art, and we have one of his paintings sitting above me above the purple one is michael's painting i can't raise my computer too much higher but that blue painting on the top is one of michael's works the one below it's one of mine so michael tell us what's going on how are you doing well i'm well i'm doing great and I, you know i'm i'm kind of like ben i don't my studio isn't where i live i live in long beach so i commute across the bridges um which is an interesting experience, you know, almost every day. I'm here probably six, seven days a week. And um, I think that's, you know, for me, that's really important. I mean, I I a happy reputation of being kind of crazy and busy. And this just kind of fills the idea of getting out of the house and moving. Um, I think saves me and saves my relationship with my wife. <laughs> if we extend too much time together, you know, it just gets a little crazy. Um, so I find, yeah, I find being here is probably as cathartic as anything I can possibly do. Um, I really haven't done any work that directly relates to the, uh, the virus. Uh, it's, it's, I, I'm afraid I'd probably politicize it too much. For me that, you know, I, I don't do that so much, that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I 
and I haven't had anybody really close to me. I'm fortunate so far. I haven't had anybody really close to me really feeling threatened or uh, with a heavy emotional involvement by losing somebody. And, and so for me, it's kind of like watching it on television. You know, it's kind of like hearing about it, seeing about it, but I, I don't really feel a connection to, to what's going on. And maybe part of that is I spent 25 years in the fire department, county fire department. And so these kinds of situations, there's never been anything like this. Uh, but I, I have been involved in situations where there's a lot of stress and um, for a period of time. So I'm not sensing the involvement like I did in 9-11. When 9-11 went down, I went to the studio and painted for three days straight. Just absolutely stood at the easel for three days and slept, didn't go home, just went to the easel and, and the studio would hit basically and took what was in me out. Uh, still gets me going. Uh, when I had cancer, I did work relating to cancer. The last cancer I had was exceptionally intimate and I did that piece back there behind me with the golden figure. Uh, title of the piece is the Da Vinci and the, and the Luck of the Draw. And they happened to use a, uh, you know, a robot on doing the work, which is named Da Vinci. So it just kind of seemed like it worked. So I had some real intimacy involved in those two things. This I can't seem to hook into uh, as a source. Uh, I thought, Ben, I thought those pieces, those, when you showed the mass, I thought, that is really sweet. Uh, I really, really like those. Um, I was a ceramics major at LA State a long, long, long time ago, back in 57 and 58 and 59. I worked with a guy named Ken Starbird. He was my professor. Um, and um, I really like those pieces. I, I do as much sculpture as I do painting, probably. Um, right now, I'm, I've kind of switched from painting to more of a 3D kind of work. Uh, this piece back over here. Um, when I got back into doing art and got out of the corporate world and earning a living doing those kinds of things, uh, which was about 25 years ago, um, I wanted to go back to ceramics, but it just seemed an awful lot of, a lot of work for one person to put together a studio and then kennel and all the, all the laws that now went into it. So I started working with cardboard and um, I'm back to using cardboard quite a bit in a, in just a whole different way for me. So that's where my stimulus is right now is just kind of using these pieces and scraps of cardboard and, and, a way that I've never used them before. So uh, um, uh, that's what my work is now. Is there a way of seeing it better, the cardboard piece? Um, sure. I, he's gonna, he, yeah, he's gonna probably move, you, you could probably move your camera towards it. Uh, let, me, sure. let, me, let me try this. Because it looks cool, but I can't. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. That's beautiful. It's about four, four by four. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. It's, it, this is so, this is so illustrative of the experience that we've all been going through. Um, so yeah, it's, I, that, that's really, <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll, ah, I'll, I'll turn your, I'm going to mute it. All right, cool. So next I'd like Michael, next I'm going to talk to Sonia. Um, and then um, Sonia, how you doing? You've got yeah. one of my favorite paintings <laughs> that we showed. I think we showed some of Jody, one of Jody's paintings next to your yeah. that painting one one show last while. But anyway, what's going on with your art? Um, what's going on with your, <laughs> you know, um, with with the the hibernation, the isolation? What's happening? Um, well, it's kind of funny. I I feel like I may have a similar reaction to what Suna said, which was, in a way, like the whole thing, instead of making me like work a lot, kind of just shut me down a little bit. I mean, I continued to paint and do some little pieces, but it didn't really um, make me, I mean, partly, 
I mean, it's kind of funny, but it's not funny, but I was working on the series that's a little bit like next after this piece here. And all of them have these, like this black shape. Um, they have these pieces in them that are kind of like these almost alien forms in what's otherwise kind of like the normal world. And so I had started doing the series that was all um, interiors with like, kind of overgrown house plants and these weird yellow like sculptural shapes in there and um and in many ways it like ended up being almost prescient but like too prescient like in a way that wasn't good like it was just like you know these alien i mean it wasn't supposed to be a virus but it was kind of meant you know as like a a negative maybe dystopian view of the future with some kind of unknown thing invading houses and all seen from inside the house looking at it. <laughs> it was just like, I was like, wow, I don't really feel like working on that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not bad well, a lot of your work involves, you know, both painting and then painting from sculptures you've created or things you've repurposed. Um, but I've been, you know, really, excited to have been able to show your work and um you know i did you have any shows that were canceled as a result or postponed or anything no actually i did not in fact i'm in a show that is opening in a week or so i think i, I think it's opening may 14th and ben might know because it's driven ray um and ben's a member but um they're doing this cool show where we're all like, there's like a hundred artists and we're all installing work outside in the city somewhere or like in a window or whatever. And then they're gonna post like a map online and people will be able to like drive around and go see this art. Or I think there should be photos online too. So, so it's like a, you know, virtual, but also physical show, which is super cool. So that have been, I'm working on a piece for that. That kind of broke me out of my stupor that I'd been in for a while. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that, that sounds really interesting. I didn't even know about that. That's great to hear. I'd really like to find out more. Um, <laughs> that's super cool. It's um, totally cool. Yeah, so I'm gonna open it up to questions now. Um, uh, anybody feel free to ask any of the artists or all of us a question, whatever you'd like or Anybody on the panel can ask a question or anybody else. Um, and we're just going to open it up. Hey, Jury, could I just add one more thing? Sure. Um, like we talked about shows that were canceled. Um, I, it wasn't my personal show, but, uh, you know, the Alfa Romeo Tango Gallery. You can see the logo behind me here uh, of the Battleship uh, Iowa Art, Art Gallery. Uh, we were going to have a show of J.D. Smith that was going to open right as this was going to, like about a month ago, it was going to open up. And he's a, he's a he's a he's kind of an outsider folk artist. He was a he's a Navy veteran. He's a pipe fitter in uh, Venice. And this show is amazing <laughs> that we have up right now. And and you know it, it didn't get open. So uh, it might be a long time, but I just wanted to just tell everybody about this great show that we have on the Iowa um, that we will open eventually. You know, and just stay tuned for that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to give everybody information about Vika too. We 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 left. The, the loft in San Pedro took us about five months to find and move into a new place. We moved into the Bendix. We had an opening on February 8th, which with ja which Jacques Trayman, who's in our audience, came to. So did uh, a lot of you. And, um, and then the opening came February 8th, and then the Bendix building closed their doors, pulled down the metal gates, and we don't have access to our galleries. All, all, all of us galleries don't have access to our space. In fact, we saw, I saw you that night, I think, Ben, or one, one night out front um, with your wife. And we, you know, we were, it's been a gigantic shock. And all I've been trying to do is hold on to the lease, you know, which is very, very challenging given what's happening. Hopefully you won't have to hear more about it than we're opening back up again, but that's what's happening with us. And I know um, I plan to show several of you. Um, so that's what's happening with us. Um, so and any other questions? 
I have a question. Sure, Jody. Oh, Jody or Sonia? Oh, oh, did you did you just say you had a question, Sonia? I know, I know my pals, but yeah, I have a question. Oh, that's great. That's sure. great. I do, yeah. I did okay. too, but <laughs> she spoke up. Go ahead, Sonia. Okay, I was wondering if anybody else, if, if this whole thing has made anybody else question, like what art is or means or what purpose it serves. Um, I, I'll answer first. I have not, I have felt more connected to physical objects around my house and, in rent, you know, been able to stare at them longer and spend more time with all the paintings I have of all these different artists in my house. And even, you know, mementos that, um, that I keep on my piano or on my mantle um, have become more important to me. And so, in my opinion, in my personal experience, it's enhanced the desire to be close to objects. Um, yeah, Jody, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it's funny, Sonia, that you were going to ask that because I was going to ask you that as well. And <laughs> for me, um, I find that times like these are when really. Um, deeper meaning comes into our existence as to maybe it's not about the ego. It's not about who's doing what and what does someone think of me. It's more, it gets you away from that, which is so important. And it gets you into the aspect of what are you visually recording? What are you putting down in history in imagery or music or performance that is related to what is happening in our times? Because even, you know, and, and you know, you know, Yuri, I've been doing that work on the kind of apocalypse and destruction of things for the last five months, and then this happened. And, I, and a lot of people do that though. This is not unusual. This is actually, goes happens all the time with creatives and that we're making stuff the what if question and it doesn't matter if it's you know pandemic whatever we're always doing the what if i think in the back of our heads but i think as artists we're all here to visually record what is going on whether it's a personal journey of how we feel about things or just recording history and um you know, I think the pandemic, even though there's so many losses of lives and everything, it's such a bad, terrible government right now. But what we take away from it is the idea that it's not about each individual. It's about us as a whole, us as a community that is putting down in history where, I mean, our time will be covered up eventually. And there'll be layers and layers of dirt above us. And then archaeologists will go back down or the aliens will go back down and find out, oh my gosh, well, who is, what is this race about? Oh, they're called an art community. You know, I don't know, in Venice or what's Micah? And, you know, millions of years from now, whatever, you know, something will be here. We won't be here. And, you know, it might be like AI where there'll be aliens doing archaeological digs. But for whatever reason, even though it might seem all meaningless, our existence, it isn't in that while we're here, it's our purpose to be here purposefully in a purposeful manner, whether yeah, I, we count or not. And that's our job is we are visual recorders. And yeah, so, I, you know. yeah, I agree with you 100%. I'll give, I'm gonna interject really quick before I go to Corinna, um, cause she's got a question, but Last panel, last Thursday, Jack Rutberg was very outspoken as he always is. And he said, and he, I've always been an admirer of his because he's a raconteur, he's a storyteller. And sometimes you'll, you may have heard his stories from him three or four times telling the same story, but it, it's always got a new flavor and something new interesting. And he said, he said look, this is, a, this is a bad thing, pandemic, but if you look at the history of art, the history of art is littered with horrible activities happening all the time. And it seems like artists are the ones who have survived through that 
in order to record things that we don't we could have easily forgotten. Um, in this century alone, we've been through two gigantic wars: well, Vietnam War, Korean War, now the Gulf Wars. But also, but most importantly, the first and second world wars, which were devastating to the world, and um, and artists weren't uh, identified um, later by what they did during those wars. It was they were identified by their work itself. It may have reflected the time, but it wasn't like oh, that's World War II work or that's World War One work. It wasn't. And so I don't think. I think he's right. I don't think it's going to be COVID work unless it's specifically related to it. But I think it's interesting to take a look at history and see what we can learn from it, and also what we can do better. Um, so next question. Uh, well, Karina, did you have a question? And then after that, we'll go to Liz. I can't hear her. Oh, uh, let me let me turn her on. Unmute her. There you go. I had a statement more than a question, just the experience of, and from what all of you're saying, I think it, there's, a, a, there's a collegial, familial quality that's happening, both with artists, with society, I, on the upside of all of this, the random acts of kindness. The, it's been uplifting in that regard. I have had some friends that were sick that I was scared to death and I can't even imagine what it'd be like to go through it for myself. So I had a piece that I did that was almost like a, an epiphany for me when, when this whole thing started to e expand and that helped me to get through. But I've also found that the political element has really become that much more important to me, like fighting for the post office. I mean, I'm working with several groups on that and as much as I have to do my work, I think that's true for all of us. I just have to, otherwise I just, I get very, very depressed. I have to do it one way or another. So the cathartic work helped me to get back with my own voice. So anyway, I just think the collegial element that you're, Jody touched on that too, I think about just this group caring that we're doing this now. There's some good things coming out of this. And I try to be grateful and focus on the good because otherwise it's easy to get depressing, depressed and become just paralyzed. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, how about uh, Liz Goldner? Would you you wanted to say something? So I write, and I wanted to respond to what you said about this time that we're going through. Uh, one of the most striking show art shows I've seen in a while was about a year ago at the Baltimore Art Museum. And it was surrealism created during, uh, just before and during the Second World War by the famous surrealists like Miro and Picasso and Max Ernst. And, you know, I've known about these artists forever, but I saw, I saw their work with new eyes. I really saw how their work reflects the times they were living in. And I, uh, they were very dark, and, and many, of course we had Picasso's Guernica, which certainly is about war. But honestly, uh, probably maybe because I'm a writer, I'm very reflective, and, I, and I'm thinking about the times that we're living in currently. And this is the worst time I have ever lived through, personally. I mean, this is, this is the scariest. Yeah, we lived through 9-11. We've lived through all kinds of awful things going on. But we've got not only this virus and the germs and the possibility of catching it, but we've also got this horrendous political situation, which I'm sure probably everyone in this, in this group agrees with. I think that our country is honestly worse off than just about any other country. I mean, I don't know if you realize it, but um, Germany and Austria are about to open their museums and Korea has opened its galleries. And when this happens here is anyone's guess. I mean, what, if things continue as they are, it could go on for a very long time. So I, I really feel, I mean, yeah, I haven't seen any new art since this shutdown, but I really feel that, that in time when it's over, I think we'll see that people have created art that, that, that does reflect the, the, the really difficult uh, period that we're going through, the really scary period of, of not knowing what what's going on now or what the future holds. So I do, I, I, I think I would, more I than just, just hunker down and, and, you know, and, and 
and work on your art, but to really, you know, reflect in your art what what's going on, you know, and also what's going on in your minds. I mean, I, if I can just say one more thing, I've been having really strange dreams, more stranger than I can ever recall, and very surrealistic dreams. And I wake up and I feel like my dream is like a Moreau painting. And I, I wonder, you know, what these surreal artists during the mid 20th century, what their dreams were like. You know, I just really urge everyone to just express what's going on inside of their own heads on the campus or their sculptures or whatever. <laughs> I 100% agreed. I mean, the other day I, I did a bunch of paintings and I've sort of been documenting them online with this, with these really sort of inane, so, um, sort of um, impulsive, super short movies that are really poorly done, that are live Facebook movies that I've just been laying out there, whatever was in my head at that time. And I found myself painting these weird paintings that I couldn't understand what I was doing. And then I realized that they were related to the, to the isolation and the COVID and the things being upside down. And so I came up, you know, I had to look up the Estonian word for plague and I used it in my title. So people wouldn't necessarily know that the series was about the plague, but because, because I, but, but I see, but I think that it, that whether like Jody said, whether you're somebody who's a visual report recorder or you're talking about your dreams or whatever, um, you are a product of your times, but um, I think I think the idea that we're going to get through this is most important for all of us. And um, you know, I could I you know my my last you know maybe we'll have a panel next time where every where the people are going to talk about what their dreams have been during this because you brought up something that's really hit home for me because my dreams have been extremely vivid in color and incredibly um, insightful in so many weird ways. Because I, I wake up and I'm like, I cannot believe I dreamt that. And sometimes I'll just stay asleep and be in that little semi-consciousness state because I wanna keep watching what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an interesting process. So I totally hear what you're saying about the dreaming. Anybody else have any final comments or questions? Um, at all, um, I want to, you know, before we go, I want to wish you guys all safety and health. I, any of you can call me at any time because I know all of you fairly well. And, um, you know, I found that I use the phone a lot more and that I talk on the phone a lot more and I rant a lot more. I spend a lot of more time verbalizing things. So if you're in for up for any of that, uh, you're welcome to, to, to give me a call. And uh, also, uh, uh, you know, I just, you know, I think I, I just want everybody to feel good and feel better and let's open our doors again and show our work as soon as possible. Anything, anything anybody else wants to say before we go? Okay, so that's Corinna. Corinna's saying something. Let me unmute her. I unmuted you. I just wanted to tell you that if you're interested in participating, like, there's a bunch of postcard stuff to try and help the post office. One is a project that Martin Betts, if you just, you maybe know him, if you just look on Facebook, it's, it's a, a project he's doing, it's ongoing for people to make a little art, send it to him. And again, it's using the post office. The other is through Indivisible, if anybody cares about that, trying to help get the Democrats out to vote, to get the Senate and back, or take the Senate and keep the House and, you know, win. I don't know. Anyway, I, I think that's something that we can do. We have a little more time. So if you're interested, let me know. Indivisible, your local Indivisible. Yeah, look them up. Cool. Very good. Um, Suli, thank you for taking the time away from your dogs and your kids um, <laughs> to come from Mexico. And I cannot wait to see your new work. I've been following the work that you've been painting. It's gorgeous. And Ben, thank you for your masks and this, that's really, yeah. really provocative. And your, your, all, your, all your whole body of work that you've been showing at LA Louvre for so many years has always been so strong for me. And uh, Michael, um, keep painting. And I can't wait to do that show when we open back up. And Sonia, the same for you. And Jody, the same for you. And um, 
Steph, Sydney, keep making those gorgeous um, montages that you do. Um, and Liz, um, thank you for your excellent question about dreams. And we'll see you guys soon, okay? Um, oh, next week, before we go, next week we're having a panel Thursday again at 1 with um, Liz Gordon Goldner, um, who suggested the idea of an art writer's panel. Um, she gave me the idea, so we're doing that. And Shana D'Ambro is going to be on. And we've asked Carolyn, Carolina Miranda. She's sort of half in, half out. Okay. We've got Jeannie Davis is going to be in it. Um, so we at least have three panelists and I'm looking, I, I also asked Sarah Cascone from Artnet. So if we, if the other two, we should know our full lineup by Saturday and we'll be posting that. So come back next week. And if you have ideas for panels that you want me to do, um, I'm ready to look. And also if you have artists who are sort of up and coming or need refreshed refreshed views. I've started this thing called online portfolio reviews. They're, it costs 40 bucks or 45 bucks or something. And I review 15 pieces of art or videos or whatever. And I do a thorough um, discussion with you about your work. And um, most of the time there's verbiage you can use later as a quote from me for your you know, for your process, but it's a, it's something that I never did before because it's so hard to keep track of all the artists you already have in your show. But I thought, what the hell, it's a new thing. Change it up, flip it upside down and see what we can come up with. So we'll see you. And, and Jak Treyman, I uh, want to recognize him. He's the Honorary Consul General of Estonia, which is going through here in Los Angeles and Estonia is going through its own thing. Um, so I want to do a shout out to Jak too. All right, you guys. Francisco, good to see you again. Good to see everyone. Good, good talk. And, and Lauren, thank you for that. I hope you can open your bar back up again. And I really like your, you know, your work really sits good in there. So you gonna, you guys gonna open the bar again? She, she runs LA Art Bar. Yeah, I think we're gonna try to open it as something. Obviously we can't gather, but... Um open it somehow i hope so all right well you all take it easy and thank you all for coming alexandra by yere thanks for coming and pause we i'm not sure who that is but come yeah hi. you guys all have a great thank day you know. guys take care right. thank you right. everybody good talk very good bye-bye bye-bye thanks yeah